Okay, so another day, another problem. Today, the circulation pump on my solar hot water doesn't seem to be working properly. So this is the unit. It's a little Grundfoss unit. Sorry, Grundfoss. Uh, they're pretty good. They seem to last forever. So I'll show you how it works. Actually, we'll test it first. So I've just undone this pipe. This is the um, push-up pipe or the feed pipe up to the roof panels. And when the pump's on, as controlled by this little chrome gen box, it senses the water temperature on the roof and the water temperature in the tank. And depending on that, it turns on this pump, which pumps the water up this pipe, and then back down this pipe through this one-way valve back into the tank to heat the tank. So I'll check the one-way valve and we'll have a look at that and see if that's free-flowing. And we'll also check the pump. And I'll think come up for a new pump, probably about $300 and the valve about $25, $30. Okay, let's get the pump turned on and see what happens. Okay, so just turn the pump on. We get the green light, but we're not getting any humming. We're getting nothing going on on that pump. So we'll just take that off and show you what it looks like. A bit tricky with the one hand. Actually, not getting any water inside there. Okay, so what we've got inside the pump is a little spinning impeller that's magnetic sitting there on the coil, on the magnet coil, and that just sits in the housing and just sucks the water in from the center and spins the water out to the top. So that's just, um, didn't actually have any water then, so it probably wouldn't have run too well, but I might try that again. This impeller just lifts out. If I turn on the power, turn on the right power, I can feel, I can just feel the magnet, magnetism, but just getting nothing on that. So I was a bit confused as to what was going on outside when I couldn't get this to um, fire up and turn on its green light. I've just taken the cover off, so the cover's pretty straightforward. So it's just this cover here, just two plastic, sorry, two screws in the side there and lift that cover off. And look what we've got going on in here. Just grab this pencil. This is the live and a little corroded it looks like whoever put this cable in, and this is factory, I've never touched this, with this gland and this cable relief, they never tightened the screw up. That's the first problem. So we'll get that back in and see if we can get this to spin. There's the LED and the little warning light and then probably a capacitor. And uh, down into the motor. All right, so let's dig a bit deeper. So we fixed the obvious fault and um, just soldered those wires, got them all back on nice and tidy and now if we turn it on you won't necessarily hear that hum but I can actually feel that you might be able to see that vibrating there you go you can hear it so I've got magnetism but I've got no spin I'm just gonna have a think about that because it could be the windings but it could also be that capacitor so we'll uh, go a bit deeper, see what we can find out. But certainly at the moment, that's not spinning and acting as a pump, it's a centrifugal pump. So uh, a bit more to find out. But we have got, uh, you see we've got the green light on there. And we've got power to that board. So let's see what we can find out. So going a little deeper, this PCB um, pulls out. So you can actually remove this and just slide this upwards. It's got the LED on it. It just drops down and it's got three terminals or two terminals. Okay, it's only got two terminals. So we've got the neutral going through those four resistors and back up to the LED. And the live. And the live's on the LED. So live on the LED straight down, neutral, 
through the four resistors and then down. Yeah, I think. Let's have a bit of a closer look. It's not really that complicated, and you can see it's been cooked. But those resistors should still be fine. I'll just test those, see they're still resisting. Uh, and then on this side, we've got three terminals in. Throw the impeller on the floor. Uh, we've got center two green wires on the one terminal, and then the capacitor over the two outside red wires. So we'll go a bit deeper, we'll get this bit off. Not quite sure how this comes out. Uh, it seems to have some little clips. This bit just popped up after a little bit of violence and uh, popped off, I think, these clips. So let's go for it. Okay, so I did get down a bit further. So I managed to get the red ring off. That was just the two little clips on the side. It's a bit of gross sense going on there. Two little clips on the side and then just easing the top clips out. That then let me get to this center plastic molding. And this was just clipped on the center, so a little bit of easing and that came out. Disappointingly, some evidence of water inside here. So the seal has failed and it has got wet inside, but it's not too bad. And this is a completely sealed unit, so we're not getting inside here. So the only idea I've got is this capacitor, which maybe has failed, maybe isn't allowing the motor to start, or the uh, winding to have a, an out of phase between the two, which would make sense, but it wasn't really, you know, you'd expect to see it go forward backwards a little bit more with that 50 hertz. But I might see if I've got a capacitor or something similar to that uh, to give it a test. Other than that, I think we're in the bin. Okay, let's try that. Okay, so making a little bit of progress here. So if we go from the red wire to the red wire, that is two of the circuits, both circuits together, so 1.7 kilo ohms. Red wire to the green wire, 893. And the other red wire to the green wire, 893, no, you don't only one. So what it tells me is the coil resistances are pretty consistent and seem to be holding there. But if they then use my fluke, and uh, thanks to the internet for this one, I'll try and find out who to say thank you to. And I just clip this one to one side of the capacitor. So now the circuit is through the multimeter and just through the capacitor, because I have cut this off here. So if we go to the other side of the capacitor, we can get in there. I just got to press this first. Be good if I got it on the right reading. There we go. So 115 narrow fad farads, which is 0.12 microfarads. And if we look on the unit, it's a 0.68. Sorry, 0.62 microfarad, plus or minus 10%. So it seems to be out by about a factor of five too small. And that leads me to believe that that might be fried. So we'll try and find a replacement, see if we can get something pretty close to that. Get it in there and see if we can get this running. Okay, sketchy test number one. Or two, I think. So this is a little um, cap that I just went and fetched. It's a bit smaller than the one I had. And not exactly a drop in this is a 474 so 474 plus or minus 10 percent so what could be 420 up to 520 maybe give it a and we've got the motor in and we're going to give it a go see what happens look at that Beautiful. okay we'll call that a win not sure about the whistle though Let's just see if that's related to the impeller or the um, capacitor. Okay, that's the impeller. That's good news because that could be just catching on the side a little bit. I did have it out and had it in a little bit of um, rustiness there. But let's try again. If we just try. I'm pretty happy. Oh, there you go. Okay, what do we call that? We call that a win. So I'm going to order up the right cap, but because I want to get this going tomorrow, I'm going to just slap that cap in and hope for the best. And uh, I know because that's smaller, it might run a bit warmer, but it was just cooking before. It wasn't running at all. 
So let's see how we go, get that in and maybe we get the right cap on the way. Okay, so all back together, all nicely glued now. Got that temporary cap in there and uh, all good to get back and assembled back onto the heating system. So we'll um, be getting that back on and I'll show you how that goes tomorrow. Right, so uh, all back together now and um, no leaks. You might just be able to see, I'm not sure if you can see that green light on down there. Yep. So now that's pumping. And then if we just have a look what's going on. So I'll get my infrared camera, try and get it so you can see what's happening. So the pump itself is a little warm, maybe 18. Now water's cold. What we're going to look for is this water here start to warm up as uh, it comes down off the roof. So we'll just give that a minute and see what it looks like. So here we are the next day, 24 hours later, and the pump, uh, it's off now but it was on a little bit earlier. This has still got a little bit of warmth in it. But if we look at the tank, 48 degrees Celsius for all that water. Beautiful hot tank. All right. All right, so it's been on for a, a day now, two days actually, and this is absolutely toasty. It's off now, green light's off, it's just getting nightfall. This one's toasty and the tank is 67 degrees, 68 degrees. We have a couple of days of heating. So that is awesome, that's nice and toasty. And we're all good, thanks for watching. So just wrapping this up and just to show you how it all worked out at the end. So this is the larger capacitor. Um, that turned up later. So this one is actually the right value, so it's 684 microfarad. That's the original one, which was the 62. And this one's the 474, which was kind of the interim one um, that we had in there. And uh, just to say it's all working fine, so we'll get that all back together and put the cover back on this time, so it's looking a bit tidier. Okay, thanks for watching. All right, so just to wrap this one up, I just did another little mod right at the end. So I've put this, um, these quad temp sensors on. So one of them is in the middle of the tank, one of them is at the uh, top of the tank under this uh, cover. So I've just got it, just lift this out of the way, just got it there on top of the tank, clipped onto the bolt. And then I've got one on the hot from the roof and one on the feed to the roof. And so I can see here, I've got 50 coming off the roof, 40 going up to the roof, 50 at the top of the tank, 43 at the bottom of the tank, and uh, then 41 at the bottom of the tank. So if you just see the differential across the tanks, about 10 degrees, give or take, these are all nice and toasty, <coughs> ready to go. The pump with the um, pasta repair is working fine, and we're all good. So um, I'll just allow me to keep my eye on that, and instead of the old one, which was on battery, I'm just running this one off a of plug pack mains so that it, uh, it's just going to sit there forever. Okay, thanks for that. Right, just a slight correction to the last video. I think I got the pipe slightly wrong. So the temperature at the top is coming off the roof, so about 65 currently, and the temperature at the bottom is going to the roof, so about 56. And then the top of the tank is 77, and the mid of the tank is 61. So you can see the cold water flowing out up onto the roof, getting heated up to the 65 coming back and warming the bottom of the tank, or the mid of the tank, no, the bottom of the tank. And uh, I guess today that's been much hotter because it's got it over 77 today, but on a really good day, it'll go to 100. So I'll have a quick look tomorrow and see how that's going. But otherwise, um, that's 200 litres of water heated from maybe, I don't know, 20 degrees up to around 80 degrees, so 60 degree rise. So we can work out the uh, maths on that, and I'll put that in the description to show how many kilowatts that's gained in about two days, give or take.